I'm going to give you the current technical outlook for the S&P 500. And in forming a technical outlook, I go over hundreds of different charts, hundreds of different um, indicators, and take a weighted the evidence approach. And today, I'm going to go through a few of them with you, um, including looking at price, which is trend analysis. I'm going to go through some intermarket studies, which is looking at historical patterns and seeing if they give us a roadmap for the future. We're going to look at market breadth, which is a measure of participation within the stock market. Momentum, which is the um, rate of change of price or how fast the price, <coughs> prices rise or fall. We're going to look at volume, which is the amount of shares that trade hands. Um, and then, I'm sorry, actually seasonal patterns. We're also going to go over intermarket analysis, which is looking at different asset classes and how they relate to each other. So with that, we're going to start pretty simply. We're going to look at some price charts. This is the S&P 500 going back to 1996. So this is going to be more of a long-term look. And what I want you to focus on is two points here. First is the peak in 1999-2000, where the S&P 500 uh, moved from a bull market to a bear market at roughly 1550 to 1570. Then once again, in 2007, after the bull market from 2002 to 2007, the S&P 500 started selling at about 1550 to 1570. So in the technical community, that has formed what is called resistance. It's a point at which selling overwhelms demand and prices start to fall. Um, you can also think of it as a ceiling on prices. Now, going to the current bull market, you can see just how powerful the bull market has been that there was a lot of concern moving into the middle of 2013 that we were once again at the 1550 level, but we broke through the ceiling, we broke through the resistance zone, um, and in fact, we are now 18% higher. We're at all time highs in the SP 500, roughly about 1880. So for someone like me, this is a great signal for a long-term investor that perhaps we're off to a new range after breaking um, that resistance zone. Not only do we look at long-term charts, but we look at short-term charts. This again is the S&P 500 going back to 2011. And we're going to monitor the current bull trend. And it is a bull trend. We're off to new highs. But what exactly makes the bull trend? And what I look at is a pattern of lows and a pattern of highs. First, we're going to start with the lows in the chart here. And you can see in yellow, every single major low in this advance was higher than the previous, previous low. Not only that, but if we look at the highs in the chart, marked in red here, every single high or major high was higher than previous high, and we're currently at another all-time high. That is what makes a bull trend. Furthermore, we can take the lows or highs, in this case I'm using the lows, and we can form what's called a trend line, and that's what I have marked here in green. So as I said, this is a bull trend. What would make me concerned on a price basis, at least in the short term, it is two things. First is if the S&P 500 fell below the green line as it continues moving higher. And then second, if we put in a pattern um, of lower highs and lower lows, that would mark what's called a bear trend. So those are the two things that I'm looking for, but currently price is very healthy on a long-term and short-term basis um, until proven otherwise. So that's really the external look of the market, but what's happening underneath the surface? And I first want to start by looking at some volume charts. This is the, SM, I'm sorry, the New York Stock Exchange volume going back to 2010. And I wanted to start here, because um, every now and then I'll uh, tune into some of the uh, financial uh, television shows. And time and time again, I hear that volume is low in this period, and that's bad for the, for the stock market. And I really couldn't disagree more with that. Um, so I want to you know, kind of set the record straight here if you've heard that as well. Now, the volume is low. We're in a, you know, stuck in a pattern here, a flat pattern for the last three years between 6,000 and 8,000. And that is low if you compare it to other decades. But there are reasons for that, and uh, we're not going to get into that. But um, this pattern of flat, low volume has been a great time to be an investor. The S&P was up 13% in 2012. It was up over 30% in 2013, um, and it's up another couple percent this year. And what would concern me is actually quite the opposite. It's if we saw a spike in volume, that's what would concern me. The last few areas on this chart where we had spikes in volume in 2010 and 2011 were periods when the S&P 500 fell. It fell by 14% in 2010. It fell by 20% in 2011. So that's what's going to concern me right now. This is not concerning. Volume is, is okay um, until we see some spikes. Uh, so going a little bit further than that, 
what could lead to a spike in volume. Um, and this is just one indicator that I look at in order to try to gauge um, if a spike in volume will be occurring. And it's called the smart volume or the smart money indicator. Um, and, and not getting into the details of how it's created, uh, basically what it tries to do is it tries to map what is technically the smart money which are large institutions or people that are supposedly in the know, but more of the bigger players in the market. And what I want to see is that there's confirmation between this line and the S&P 500. Going back to 2009, this line generally rose throughout the entire bull market. However, just recently, as you'll notice here in 2013, this line marked a high and then put in a lower high. Not only that, but it had a succession of two lower lows. That is what's called a divergence. The lines are not confirming. And what that signals to me is that investors or larger investors are not as enthusiastic to be buying now that we're at these all-time highs. And that's a clear warning signal. Oops, sorry. This next slide I want to show is a study of momentum. Um, it's, it's a very simple study. There's lots of different indicators that we can look at. And on this case, it's a rate of change chart on a five-year basis. This goes back to 1900, and I want to point you to the current bull market that we've been in since 2009, as marked by 2014 here. And you can see that over the past five years, we've now reached a point where the S&P 500 total return is about 180%. That is a very large return in a very short amount of time, as you can see on this chart. I've drawn a line here that puts this advance in some you know, pretty shady company. 1929, 1937, 55, 87, 99. You may recognize them as periods that uh, preceded significant bear markets. Um, so this to me is just a warning that the market has gone too far too fast. And it is just that. It's just a warning. It's not a timing indicator. Um, we don't want to say, oh, it's above this line. It's time to sell immediately. What if this 2014 turns into another, you know, 1929? We would leave close to 100% gains on the table here over the next, however, you know, many months or years, and I'm sure you guys would not be too happy with that. Let's take a look at some uh, market breadth um, indicators. And the first one here is the more classic market breadth indicator, and it's the advanced decline line. Uh, and this goes back to 2011. And what it does is it measures how many stocks are rising when the S&P 500 rises. And as you can see by the line, it has gone to a new all-time high, which means that there is lots of stocks participating in this rally. It's a really healthy market right now. There's lots of stocks moving higher with the S&P 500. Um, and what would concern me is if we started to see what's called a divergence, very similar to um, the uh, last chart that I showed. But I don't think there's such a rosy picture being painted by the advanced decline line. And there is, again, many indicators that you look at in market breadth. And this is just another one. It's a measure of stocks over the 200-day moving average. It goes back to 2011 as well. I want to see that this line is moving higher with the S&P 500, and it generally did from 2011 into 2013. But in 2013, we had a peak. About 80-some percent of the stocks were trading above the 200-day moving average in 2013, but today there's a little over 70%. So it's a slight divergence, and what it means to me is that the, narrow, uh, the leadership is narrowing. So yes, most stocks are participating to the upside, but there's only a few stocks that are actually beating the S&P 500. Um, and anecdotally, you probably hear a lot of stories of uh, parabolic rises in you know, biotech stocks or solar stocks and um, internet stocks um, that are really um, what, may, what might be called a bubble. Um, and those are the stocks that are leading, and it's very narrow. Uh, so that is a sign that market breadth is not as healthy as the advanced line on suggests, and it's probably more in a neutral state. That's the divergence. The next one we're going to look at is a, just a study of intermarket um, relationships. And in this case, we're using safe haven assets or assets that investors flock to for safety, including gold and the 30 year treasury. And we're going to compare them to what are generally considered to be more risky uh, positions financial stocks, discretionary stocks, and industrial stocks. As you can see on the left side of the chart, gold and 30 year treasuries have had a great year. Gold is up 12% so far this year, 30 year treasuries are up about 5% on the year. And the S&P 500 is only up about 1.5%, so the safe haven assets are, are currently winning. Not only that, but if we look at the financials and discretionary industrial stocks, these are stocks that have done really well over the last two years. They have led the market higher. They are stocks that depend on the economic cycle in order to do well, and all three of them are so far year-to-date trailing the S&P 500. 
Um, now this is for the year to date through the first couple of months. Um, and I'll tell you there's a pretty marked difference between what happened in January and what happened in February. In February, these stocks really overperformed. But in February, they're actually performing quite well and they're beating the SP 500. So I'm going to continue to monitor this um, to see if they continue. And if they start beating the SP 500 and moving the SP 500 higher, that would be a sign uh, that things are a little bit better than they first seen in January. The last slide that I'm going to go over is a seasonal pattern. Seasonal patterns are, uh, again, taking a look at historical patterns and trying to compare them to our current situation to see if they give us a roadmap for the future. In this case, we're looking at um, a chart from the Stock Traders Almanac, one of the service providers that we use. And it, it uh, looks at a period when January is down and February is up. Their average is the black line, and it goes back to 1930, and it's based off of 15 prior instances in which we've had a down January up February. But as you can see, after about mid-March, if this seasonal pattern were to hold up, we have a significant correction or um, significant decline coming in the S&P 500 going into the second quarter to third quarter um, of this year. In fact, on average, we have about a 10 to 11 percent decline um, in that time frame. So, as a roadmap for the future, it's time that this may be saying it's time to be a little bit more cautious. So, in conclusion, I just want to take a total stock of, um, of all the indicators that I have and form a technical outlook. And right now, the technical outlook is neutral. Um, what it suggests is that um, you know it's not necessarily a time to sell, but it's also probably not a time to increase risk in portfolios. Trend analysis price is very healthy, and that will remain so until proven otherwise. Some of the other areas that we went over are more of a neutral um, stance. If we look at um, intermarket analysis, it, it's giving a much more bearish picture. And to give some context to that, um, this is a change that just happened in January. For the better part of um, two years, the technical outlook was bullish. And that just, again, moved to neutral in January. And I'll continue to monitor going forward to see if we uh, move into a bearish or bullish picture.